Hello, everybody, and welcome to take two of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today I am going to try to record the episode I recorded yesterday that the audio did not appear on. And we are going to be talking about something I've wanted to talk about for a long time, and I've kind of toyed with it here and there. I hope this isn't something that is going to offend a bunch of people. It probably is going to. I'm probably going to get hate mail from a lot of you. I'm going to get some angry fucking emails. I'm going to get some snooty fucking comments. Fine. I don't fucking care. Okay. I'm trying to just get out how I'm feeling about a lot of stuff. And the thing about this that's crazy is that there have been a lot of things weighing on my mind, a lot of different things about poetry, about publishing, about just everything in this world that revolves around that, like all the non-important shit in the world, you know, like poetry and publishing. For months, I guess, I thought they were all different, like they were all separate. Over the last, like, I would say week, I've noticed that a lot of these things fucking converge. It kind of blew my mind a little bit. I'm wanting to give credit where credit's due. Let me let me do the like dick sucking now. Okay. Lately, I have been listening to a bunch of the podcast episodes from the Slee Rickett Secret Show that Matthew Buckley Smith does. He's like a, a lot of the episodes that I'm talking about. Well two of them kind of revolve around his conversations with Cameron Clark and some others, but like specifically these two. And on the last episode of the secret show, they talked about some things that really like lit a fire under me to want to actually talk about this stuff. And I just want it to be known that like, the people at Slee, Slee Ricketts do not condone or approve of any of the things I'm going to be saying in this episode. <laughs> but it's um, it's good shit. It's good shit. So, not to... I, I'm not a sponsor or anything like this. But if you guys go over to the Substack for Slee Ricketts, you can... I don't know exactly how it works. I'm sure it's not even this hard. But if you like sign up for the secret show or something along those lines or something um you get like a week free so you could listen to as much of the secret show as you want find out if it's even something you want to fucking do i highly recommend everyone do this just to listen at least to episode 63 of the secret show the newest one that um, bucks put up and probably the one before that too just some really good shit some really thought provoking conversation about poetry it's just a it's a good show like the way matthew buckley smith brings up his points is very everyman but a lot of the answers or conversations regarding the everyman questions are very academic and intelligent and insightful um but and i was telling him about this the other day i'm like one of the reasons why people like listening to Slee Ricketts and like Matthew Buckley Smith, because a lot of you have told me that you listen to Slee Ricketts and it's mainly because Matt is so fucking likable. And when I told him that, he was like, what? <laughs> He's like, what? Like that? That's weird. Like, I don't think I've ever been called likable before. And it is, he's very polite. He is likable. But the thing is, is that he comes out and he will say like, I don't know if I'm right about this. I don't know if this is true, but this is what I think. And if I'm not right, somebody fucking tell me. And I'll fucking go, oh, yeah, I was wrong. And he does that all the time. Not saying that he's wrong all the time, but he seems to fucking correct himself quite a bit. <laughs> but it's, it's a good fucking quality that a lot of people in his field, in his world are very, they very seldom have the balls to admit that they're wrong about something or that they might even not be right about something. 
And Bucks has no problem doing that. And that's like one of the reasons why I fucking love him and love the show. Definitely go over there, take a, take a gander at it for sure. Um, that was kind of a long intro on that side. But just another few housekeeping notes before I get into you guys wanting to string me up by my fucking toenails and nuts. For those of you who don't follow me on YouTube or don't watch my videos on YouTube, the documentary that's being made about me, um, I, br I, I don't know how much I brought it up on the podcast, but I've talked about it on YouTube quite a bit. There is a director for that now, and it's Shaylin Marks. She put together like one of the most amazing proposals that anyone on the production team had ever seen. And she has such a fucking clear vision for like what she wants to, I don't know, I guess tell all of you about me. That sounds fucking dumb when I say it, but I don't know another way of putting it together. Um, but she just she blew everyone away and for those of you who don't know Shaylin's been on the show before too back in June I think she was on the show so you could go back and listen to that I don't know it, it's just like I read her pitch and I was like interested I'm like I would watch this but it was about me so it felt weird and odd but I don't know so like if anyone gives a shit about a documentary about me. I'm assuming you might, if you like listening to me bitch for an hour every couple times a week or whatever. So that is in the works, and I believe we are going to start shooting in February. I think that is the... Because, like, we've already shot with the production. We've shot a bunch of, like, sizzle reel shit. And if you are... A member on my YouTube at any level, whether it's a Thank You Crew, Anarchy Crew, or Chapbook of the Month Club, or anything like that, I've been posting um, clips of the sizzle reel and shit. So if you want to take a look at that, you could run over to YouTube and do that. For everybody else, like the actual shoot of the movie um, is going to be in February, and then apparently, what we're gonna be doing on top of just like my philosophies and shit like that and my day-to-day -day business operations and stuff like that is um and we're only going to be shooting for a few weeks so we got to try to fit all this in but um i'm going to be recording a new creeperson album because it's the 20th anniversary of creeperson next year i'm going to be making a new movie um and be in this like short film competition where I have a certain amount of time to make a movie from start to finish and then have a screening for it. Um, it's going to be the 10 year anniversary of my Black Star Canyon series. So we're going to be doing a re-release of that, um, which might be serialized like it was originally. We're not 100% on that. We haven't decided and then um, also doing um, a bunch of like readings and signings and going on the road and um, doing other shit, even having like a musical performance and an art show and all this other shit. So the, there's a ton of stuff that's happening in the documentary. And um, I don't know, like if you want to see me fail miserably or if you want to see me succeed like a fucking motherfucker, then maybe that's something you'd want to fucking take a look at. But it's going to be fun because I love doing things under the gun. And like, I don't know, I just kind of excel when deadlines are like forced in my face. It's like daring me to fucking do something. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I think that's, yeah, let's just get to the fucking show. Let's just get to the fucking show. Okay, so uh, I don't even know where to fucking start with this. And it's so fucking stupid because I've I already recorded this whole episode once. So you would think I would know where to go. But I feel like the whole reason why the episode didn't work was because I was too harsh and too shouty and too angry. Although I know a lot of you like it when I get like that. I know you guys, you tell me, you tell me you like it when I get pissed. Basically, I guess we'll start with why poetry isn't popular and why people don't like poetry. And this is going to piss a lot of people off. Okay. But to bring this all around, 
every once in a while, I will get a bee in my bonnet because you hear people say all the time, like, oh, I used to really hate this. And then I gave it another shot and I liked it. And so every once in a while, I'll go through some stuff and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I was too harsh on blah, blah, blah. Maybe I should give it another go. Maybe and all that other fucking shit. So I was just sitting around not fucking doing anything. And I was on YouTube and I'm like, oh, let me watch this documentary on TS. Let me kill the world poetry Elliot and see what it's like. You know, maybe go in with like a like a fresh slate. <laughs> OK, so um, I'm not going to do the video of it because that's what I did last time. And I think that's what fucked everything up. So let me pull this up. We will talk about it. In the mountains, there, there you feel free. I read much of the night and go south in the winter. What are the roots that clutch? What are they? What branches grow out of this stony rubbish? Which ones? Son of man, you cannot say or guess. Then why for ask? you know only a heap of broken images where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. No, no. Only there is shadow under this red rock. Where? Where? Come in under the shadow of this red rock. I come where I fucking and want. I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. How dare you? I will write such poetry that you will never be understanding of it all. Let's see, let's see what else we got here. Etherized upon a table. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets, That's the different. muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night cheap hotels Sounds and sawdust great. restaurants with oyster shells. Yes. Streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious oh. intent. To lead you to an overwhelming question. What's the question? What's oh, the question? do not ask what is it. Why not? Let us go and make our visit. Oh, how That's just a little, a little taste of what I'm fucking bitching about here. This is the reason why people don't like poetry, okay? Now, some of you will say, well, those are just like monologue readings of like poets and poetry. Okay? I don't give a fuck. Okay, because here's the thing. It is so up its own ass. It's so highfalutin fucking bullshit. Now, the reason why I do not feel like any shame in saying this shit right now is because even academic poets, even people in the fucking MFA world, and I'm so fucking tired of talking about it. You think I'd fucking get annoyed at to death of this they say to me that poetry readings are cringy as fuck they don't really enjoy going to them but they know they have to okay so let me get this straight here okay now i know there are probably some poets out there who fucking love poetry readings and love going to every reading they can and love every fucking poet that opens their fucking liquor okay i'm sure you're out there I don't believe you, but I'm sure you're out there. The problem is most poets loathe hearing other people read, but for the most part, kind of get off on themselves reading. Some of them don't even do that. They just hate the whole fucking thing altogether. Okay. Now here's the fucking rub. Okay, guys, if everybody thinks poetry readings are fucking cringy as shit, but do nothing to fucking fix the problem. What do we do with these people? Like, fool me once, shame on you, you know? Fool me twice, you know? I'm gonna hold my ankles this time, you know? That whole fucking thing. So, this whole idea, and like, I'm not trying to talk shit on whatever fucking thespians were fucking reading the great works of Eliot. Like, I'm not trying to fucking throw anybody under the bus here. They're doing what they think they're supposed to do. But the problem is, is that they think they're supposed to do that because 
they're not the only ones who think that's what they're supposed to do. Other people, when they think of poetry readings, will think of shit like that because that's what they've been exposed to, whether it's through fucking Shakespeare or high school or college or fucking whatever. This is what people assume fucking poetry is. And it's fucking not. And like the six or seven of you who are sitting around like just completely flabbergasted that I dare fucking say anything wrong about these fucking dramatic fucking readings of this. Fucking get over yourself. Nobody gives a shit. Okay? Except you. And that's fine. Like, you can give a shit if you want. I'm obviously giving a shit about this. But I just want this to be known that everything I'm going to say on this episode, okay, this is my opinion. This is my fucking manifesto on fucking art, on fucking poetry. And everyone listening to this should have some kind of manifesto of your own when it comes to what poetry means to you, what it is to you, how important it is to you, and what you like and what you don't like. And there's nothing wrong with that. The only time anything like that is wrong is when you speak of it in absolutes. Now, um, I'm going to try really hard to make sure that as I'm talking about this stuff right now, I am not going to be speaking in absolutes. But I know that I kind of weave in and out of that. But I want you to understand that this is my personal viewpoint. This is my opinion. Okay? I'm not saying you have to think this way. I'm not saying you have to do these things. But I'm telling you that this is like my fucking ethos when it comes to this shit. Okay? Like this is what it is. And I've been putting this together for a really fucking long time. And I'm just realizing that it all falls together and shit like that. The shit I'm going to talk on T.S. Eliot. And um, apparently Elijah over at Versecraft isn't a huge fan of T.S. Eliot either. So if that is the common ground Elijah and I have to fucking cross this bridge on, then let's fucking do that, dude. Because, like, I'm assuming you might be hate listening to this after seeing the title. <laughs> so if you are, dude, touche, I got you. So, um, like, hit me up, bro. Yeah, so T.S. Eliot, like, well, well, let's go a little bit before this, okay? Walt Whitman, okay? I want it to be known, okay? And I think I've made this pretty clear in the past. I am not so much a fan of Whitman's poetry as I am about what he did for poetry and what he did for publishing, okay? That, to me, is his gift to poetry, way more so than his actual verse, okay? His actual fucking lines, all right? So, like, the fact that he fucking self-published the fuck out of Leaves of Grass and just kept fucking adding to it and adding to it and just like, I'm going to republish it now and here we go. Here is edition 7,000 and fuck you. Here we go. Leaves of Grass. Take it. What I appreciate from Whitman is he took poetry away from the classicists and the fucking romantics and he fucking gave it to the people. And I talk about this a lot when I talk about Whitman, okay? By the teens of the 1900s, he was kind of like, not like the biggest deal in the world, but he was a big enough fucking deal that you couldn't ignore Whitman at this point, okay? And so there were places that were kind of canonizing Whitman in the Western canon, like, as far as poetry goes and shit like that, which is great. But then I really feel like there were people who, and again, this might be generalization and conspiracy theory shit, but it's mine, okay? This is me talking here. I feel like 
the upper crust, the Ivy League Fox, didn't like that their little fun toy that they got to play with and sit around parlors drinking fucking mint juleps and fucking Manhattans and old fashions and shit when they would discuss their fucking lines of fucking posy was now something that like seemingly anyone if they could find a pencil and paper could fucking do i really 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 feel like for the most part for the last hundred years poetry there's been a real pull to keep poetry up in the ivory towers away from the everyman okay drives me fucking crazy but i understand it it's kind of the only thing these fucking old money fucks have to say is theirs it's like the last fucking thing and like i almost think the reason why there's no money in poetry allegedly is because they've made it that way so people can't rely on that as a fucking income and only the people who have money and have like fucking trust funds and all this other shit could play in it okay it's their thing now a lot of you who are into the more old-timey ways of poetry, whether it be formalism or romanticism or, like, just whatever the fuck you want to call it, are probably going to be like, that's not true, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine, it's not true. If you want to send me a fucking email about it and fucking prove me wrong, fucking prove me wrong. I'm telling you what I think, okay? I'm telling you how I feel. With all of this said, we get to fucking Elliot. Now, for a long time, I've said Elliot is the reason why poetry went away from all, like, Elliot destroyed all of the things that Whitman did, okay? That's just one of those feelings I have. But I would really like to expand that because it's not just Elliot's fault. Okay, but yes, Elliot is another one of these fucking guys that came from an amazing family, aristocratic, like he could fucking go fail at a million fucking things and still have more money than fucking God. Whatever. I don't give a shit. Okay, that's just what it is. Now, the person who I would like to fucking um, nail on the cross alongside of Elliot is fucking Ezra motherfucking Pound. Because if it wasn't for this fucking douchebag, a lot of motherfuckers who kind of ruined what I saw as the obvious arc in poetry, like, it fucking pumped the brakes on this shit for a fucking few decades, okay? So Ezra Pound, dude, Ezra Pound's like a whole other fucking episode in and of itself, dude. But he discovered a bunch of people and helped a lot of people that he thought were worth a damn. And we could go down the list. We could talk about Elliot. We could talk about fucking Joyce. We could talk about fucking Hem. We could talk about all these motherfuckers, okay? But he is one of the main problems. The next problem is the magazines that published these people and made people think that this was good... And then the next one would be the publishers who actually printed these fucking books, okay? All of these motherfuckers run in the same circles, okay? Fine. But guess what? That's kind of exactly how shit is now, okay? Not much has changed. So you have this whole lost generation of fucks, okay? And oh, what did, what did they do? They, they coined themselves modernists, you know, because they're going to run away from the things of the past, okay? Allegedly. And then you have your fucking postmodernists that are still, I don't know. I think postmodernism is such a wide sloth, sloth, swath of things that it could be anything. Okay. I think there's way too many things that fall under postmodernism. So I'm like, whatever, that's garbage. I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that shit. Anyway. So what these modernists did was they basically, and again, this is just my opinion, they went out of their way to make sure everything was as kind of confusing and not as straightforward as it can be. You know, they thought they were fucking doing something. Whatever, okay? I think everything they did destroyed poetry. 
if I'm going to give them any credit at all, the credit would be that they were doing shit that technically wasn't being done. And at the time, I'm sure a lot of traditional fucking poetry motherfuckers were really upset about it. And really like, how dare these fucking young whippersnappers come in here and start doing whatever the fuck they want and call that poetry. Well, 100 years later, most people think that um, like the modernists, like that is what poetry is. And there's still way too many, like, traces of them in what is considered modern poetry today, okay? So that's my beef. Another thing that I'm going to, like, bitch and complain about is because of all of this, yes, there are going to be some exceptions, but for the most part, for me, I'm not going to be reading really any poetry pre the beats okay and i don't even really like the beats but at least the beats were fucking honest the beats were true the beats were fucking like like cutting themselves open you know like even though again i don't really like a lot of the beats and i don't even like a lot of the work from the beats that i do like but that will be my starting point from now on there is nothing for me to have from anything that happened before then. And some of you might be thinking that that is a very narrow-minded way of looking at it, and that could be true. But the other thing I'm going to say about this is all of these motherfuckers, like before the beats and probably after the beats, probably up until right now, they're all learning the same fucking poetry. They're all being taught the same Western canon. So... What the fuck does it matter if I'm reading that old ass shit when all of these people who are quote unquote trained were trained with that same shit? And plagiarism in poetry, as you know, is rampant as fuck. Okay? So, like, am I going to get some Shakespeare out of my beat poets? More likely than not, yes. Am I going to get some fucking Catullus? From my fucking meat poets? Of course I am. Okay? And it's fine. I just don't give a fuck. Like, and again, this is me. This does not have to be you. But dead poets with dead poetry have nothing to give me. Like, if if I'm going to be reading dead poets, their poetry better still be alive and vibrant. If I'm going to be reading living poets, their poetry better still be live and vibrant. Because I'm going to fucking shock you here. There's a lot of living poets out there who write dead fucking poetry. And I have no use for that. None. Okay? That is kind of where I'm at. So, like, the Beats, the Confessionalists, the fucking New York School, the Meat Poets, again, like... These are all things that I'm going to be devouring... And I'm not going to just be eating everything at fucking hometown buffet. I'm going to go in there with a plan and I'm going to pick my fucking food accordingly. You know what I'm saying? I just want real fucking poetry from real fucking people. I want people to fucking just be as open and honest and fucking truthful and fucking real on the fucking page, you know? And a lot of people find that cringy. I want cringe. I want fucking cringe. I want to read a poem and feel embarrassed for the poet for sharing that. I want that. That is fucking real. That is fucking honest. I do not need fucking facades. I do not need people fucking hiding behind masks of bullshit. When they fucking write their beautiful poems about fucking butterflies and dolphins and tree leaves and ocean water. I don't give a shit. There is enough of that crap over hundreds of years of poetry that nobody needs to fucking read that shit. Unless you're really into reading crap poems about butterflies and silkworms and dead leaves and fucking mulch. Whatever. If that's you, fucking great. 
enjoy it. I hope it's fucking edifying to you to the nth degree. For me, no. But again, this is why you should be looking at what your manifesto about poetry would be. Like, what is your fucking, your tenets, your commandments of what poetry is to you? Stick to that lane, find your niche, and fucking run 100 miles an hour into a fucking brick wall with it. And bust that fucking wall down. You know? That's that's what we're talking about here. This is another reason why um, I am so grateful, actually, for fucking Insta Poetry. And so grateful for celebrity poetry books. Okay? Now, if I hadn't lost you up till now, I'm probably going to lose you at this point. I don't really fucking like Insta Poetry. Okay? I've come, I, I've come out and said that numerous times. But I love the fact that it's giving poetry to the people. And people who would never have even known what poetry was like outside of having to read The Raven during October or fucking National Poetry Month, you know, would see. And it is the fucking bleeding on the digital page, you know? Anyone can do it. Anyone can publish it. It could be seen by millions, maybe, immediately, okay? Fucking um, celebrity poets, your Lana Del Rey's, your fucking James Franco's, your whoever the fuck else is writing a goddamn poetry book. I don't know or give a shit. But guess what's going to happen? People who read that will read it. And if they dug it, they'll be like, oh my God, I need more of this. I need to read more poetry. And if they're really a fan of the person who wrote that poetry book, they might check and see who those people were influenced by. Who did they like as poets to write this book of poetry, you know? And then all of a sudden they're reading fucking Howell, you know? Or they're reading fucking Bukowski or they're reading fucking, I don't know, Ruby Cower. Who fucking cares? I don't give a shit. The fact that they are going to be reading more and spending more money on books of poetry is the most important thing to keep poetry going. A lot of people who I've talked to don't see the correlation there. They don't see how reading a celebrity poet's book will get others into doing something. And that is just very like narrow-minded, I think. Because like if we look at it in the sense of other types of art, whether it's film or TV or music, like, let's say a friend drags you to some show and you're really into, I don't know, punk music, okay? And somebody drags you to see some band you've never heard of before and they're like kind of like a ska band and you've never listened to ska before. And now you're hearing the ska band and you're like, oh shit, that was really fucking cool. I would be more interested in finding out more about this music called ska. If you went and saw some fucking movie with a friend and you're just really into sci-fi movies and you never really watch anything else, but your friend or your partner drags you to some movie that was like kind of like this like romance flick that had a little bit of sci-fi in it or something like that. And you were like, wow, that was really touching. I kind of liked how that made me feel. What else can I find like that? This is just like human nature trying to hunt and search and gather. This is what we do. This is how we expand our minds. You know what I'm saying? So yes, do I think most celebrity poetry is good? It's I don't give a shit. I won't know because it's probably not for me. But if it brings motherfuckers to the table that are buying Lana Del Rey's book this month, Next month, they might buy my book, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Instead of the poetry world being so fucking closed off to all of the new shit that's out there, embrace the fact that people give a shit and hope that you could fucking cast your fucking net in that fucking pond. I don't know if that analogy works. 
Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Metaphors, whatever. This was a much nicer version of what I did last night. Last night, there was a lot of cussing. I was kind of losing my shit up and down, back and forth. And um, a lot of screaming, a lot of shouting, a lot of finger pointing. But um, I really feel like that we made some progress here. We made some steps in the right direction. Okay. So um, this is just, again, my opinions on things. Um, you don't have to agree with them. You don't have to like them. Um, I don't give a fuck, really. I'm just telling them to you because for some reason, you people like hearing me bitch about stuff and you like hearing my cockamamie fucking ideas. So um, I guess it's time for the butt plugs. So butt plugs this week. My new chapbook, Abnormal Brain. There's only 13 copies of this, and there's not even that many now. And the only the first six were signed, so you're kind of shit out of luck at that point. But um, run over and pick this up as soon as you can while it's still there. Um, Blood Rag, issue 16 from October, has poems by Keith Phillips, Jeff Taylor, QG Pennyworth, Gabby Gilliam, Jason White, Brad Crownover, Adam Crawford, and yours truly. It's a banger, this one here. Bloodshed Review, issue 4, will be out later this month, as well as Blood Rag, issue 17, and another one of my chapbooks. Um, over on Amazon, you could pick up my digital chapbooks if you are one of these 70% of people who read poetry read it digitally you can pick up Pharma Phoenix Rises uh, poems about fucking 13 miles south of hell and Mart and I don't know what the next one is going to be it might be the ebook version of winner your mom's sodomy prize for poetry haven't decided yet could be maybe don't know um, that's a thing come uh, make sure to join the anarchy crew if you join any tier you can get involved in the Bukowski Book Club, which right now we're going through dangling in the turn Forsha. And next month we are going to be doing um, War All the Time. So that is how that's going. If you want to do some mentorship with me, send me an email, let me know. I hate my wall, gmail com. And we could set something up for that. And other than that... Oh, I just posted a video today on why your um, writing might feel sluggish. Just like a little writing tip, something um, to think about. Um, my poet vlog from this last week had um, some stuff going on about me publishing a bunch of shit. Had my first week in doing yoga and my body transformation cycle and um also um some fucking tarot shit if you're into that kind of stuff so that's loads of fun and shit so um definitely run over to the youtube page at matt wall if you have not done that yet and i think that's it okay so keep buying my books type hard everybody and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.